always, it's great to be back in the house of God. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. I see a few new faces here today. I'd like to let you know if, you, if you've never been here before, we got a visitor packet out front and a, a guest book you can sign sign in so we could um, get some information to you. I'm going to get get right started right here this morning. Anybody with a birthday? Come on down or up. Now this one here is my daughter, my oldest daughter, Brianna. She's 10. Right there. Whose birthday is it? Noah's one. All right. Paul, 13. Anybody else? You. All right, Raven. He's looking for some financial help here. You see, Mom pointed right to Dad, didn't you? Raven, how old are you this morning? Raven's 10 years old. And, uh, you know, one of the brothers gave me a dollar. Steve Regal up there, he's behind the camera. He couldn't come down this morning. Got your dollar here, bud. I think he's about 38 or something like that. I can't really remember. I don't know quite. If you would, help me sing happy birthday this morning. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. visitors. Brother and Sister Walden, how long have you been married? Seven years. Anybody else? Well, let's give them a big hand then. Seven years. If you would, help me sing happy anniversary with you. Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. you. Good lineup. 
to me. Somebody say amen, brethren. Uh, what I'll ask you to do is park towards the back because I think there'll be a wedding going on at the same time out in the front. So uh, all us fellas be back there. Sloppy Joe dinner immediately after church this morning. Uh, over in the fellowship hall that's uh, sponsored by our youth department on behalf of our dormitory fund. And uh, Brother Jason asked me that immediately uh, upon dismissal today, uh, when we bless the food over there as well, that our seniors go there first. All of our seniors go there first. That includes all of our prime timer group. Prime timers, raise your hand. Raise your hand way up. Come on now. See, I told you there was blessings in being a part of the group. You, you get Sloppy Joe's, Joe's first this morning. All right. Uh, don't, don't forget, forget Assembly Week uh, starts next Monday, the 9th through the 13th. And, and if you can't go any other night, we'd, we'd like for you to go especially on Friday night because uh, our very own pastor is going to be preaching down there Friday night. And we want to go down there and, and support our pastor. Is that right? How many wants to go down and support your pastor? How many at least be praying for him if you can't go out of town? That's, 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 that's good. Keep, Keep that in mind. Also, uh, camp, camp meeting, I want to give you these dates, the 19th through the 26th of September. Brother Ray Landis is going to be with us on Monday and Tuesday. Brother David Cornelius is going to be with us Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then uh, Brother Lonnie Lyke is going to be with us to close the camp meeting out again on Friday or on Saturday and Sunday. So we got a wonderful lineup of preachers uh, again this year. So keep that date in mind, if you will. And also, Brother Robin asked me to announce that the Victory Choir should be here tonight at 5.30, if you would. Also tonight in our service, we have the uh, John Mortimer, the missionary to Peru, is going to be speaking to us this evening. Uh, and I want you to be a part of that service as well. As Pastor Fred comes, I, I want to make a presentation to him this morning. Uh, and by the way, how many of you got your license plates that say we support our pastor? I only have, everybody's got one of these. Would you raise your hand? Matter of fact, why don't you stand up? I, I want Pastor Fred to see how many has one of these. We support our pastor license plates. Out there they are. Now, we gave him one this uh, this past Pastor's Appreciation Day that said we support our pastor. But after I gave that to him, I didn't think that was too appropriate. So I, I'll tell you what I did. I had Brother Dan's son-in-law who makes some too. I had him make one specially for Pastor Fred that says, I am the pastor. Is that right? I mean, think that's appropriate now. And, and, and we get that put on his truck before he goes to the assembly this year. So we'll make that presentation to you this morning, Pastor Fred. Our pastor, Brother Fred Cornelius. I want to thank, thank you for that. that. I, was I was going to support, support the pastor, pastor anyway with, with the other one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, but this, this is beautiful. Uh, Brother Petrie's uh, nephew is uh, a sign maker. I am the pastor at the North Monroe Street Church of God. Hope to see you soon. And the address. That's wonderful. Amen. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. We've got a lot of people that's gone. It's vacation time, you know. But we've, we've got, got some from out of state. We have Brother and Sister Rainer here from down in the Cincinnati area. And we're glad to have them. And also Kevin and Kennedy and, and uh, Kim with us this morning from Nashville. And uh, they've been staying over at our house. <laughs> in fact, that's my daughter, if you didn't know it, and son-in-law. Uh, they, went, they went to Cedar Point yesterday, all of them. And I, I stayed up till 12 o'clock last night waiting for them to get back. And they wasn't back yet, so I went to bed. And, and I unlocked, unlocked the front door so they could get in. in. And Mary and I, we, we went to sleep. And we, we didn't know it, but we didn't unlock the screen. And I'm a, usually a light sleeper. And uh, they, they said, said they rung the doorbell and pounded on the door. And Kim said she sat down on the porch and they couldn't get in. And finally, Kevin went around back to the and, and got the water hose. And, and squirted it, it up toward our window. And I, I thought, thought we, I woke up and I thought, boy, we're, we're having a bad storm. <laughs> Found out it was him just trying to get in. I was kidding, kidding him this morning. I said, it really woke me up when that water hit my face. I said, you didn't know I had that window open. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of God this morning? Give the Lord a hand of praise for what he has done for you. Amen. Let's stand together. I'm so glad Jesus 
lifted me. Well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Turn this up just a little bit. Eddie. That Jesus lifted me. Well, it's glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Well, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me.
casting all your care upon me because I care for you. Amen. So we can do that. We thank God. We're going to go before God in prayer today. We have some requests we'd like to mention. Praise report. Mary Cobb said Tony's nephew, the test came back clean. Everything was fine. We thank God for that. Uh, Shirley Meadows' grandson, Patrick, 17 years old, has a leaky heart valve going for test, and Shirley asked for prayer for him. And uh, Buford was telling me his cousin was just up here a few weeks ago, uh, went back and found out they had something wrong with their lung, and they took one quarter of her lung out at Fort Sanders Hospital. Is that right, uh, Buford? In uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and we want to pray that God would touch her. Also, Sister Anita Baker, they had to put her back in the hospital uh, yesterday evening. She, her her uh, blood count, blood sugar, had went up to over 500. And uh, so uh, let's pray that God would touch her. Nick Vollmer, I was down to visit him this week, and uh, he still needs our prayers. He's in rehab. You know, that that's a... We, I thank God that I'm able to walk and able to raise my hands. Of course, he can raise his hands, but he can't move anything from his waist down. Young man, 19 years old, and uh, I, I looked at him there, and he was in pretty good spirits, I guess, considering the situation he's in. But uh, I know we need to pray that God would touch him. He, he's in rehabilitation. He's in, uh, what is it, Rick? In the... Uh, MCO Medical College of Ohio, and he'll be there for quite a few weeks as he undergoes uh, therapy and they try to build his upper strength so he can get in and out of the wheelchair, in and out of the bed, and so forth by himself. But let's pray that God would touch him. Also, I talked to Brother Ferguson, Brother Bryce Ferguson, yesterday, and he said he wanted to thank everybody for praying for him. As most of you know, he had heart surgery. Uh, here a few weeks back, and he said he certainly appreciated that. He's feeling good, and he said, tell everybody that he said hello. And also, I, I mentioned this morning, Jeannie Petrie, uh, Brother Arley Petrie, he's pastor at one of our churches in Williamsburg, Kentucky. His wife had a stroke, Jeannie. A lot of you know her, and she's in Fort Sanders Hospital in, uh, in Knoxville. So let's pray that God would touch those requests. How many have an unspoken request today? Amen. Brother Brown. Let's remember Sister Brown. Amen. That the Lord would touch her. Someone else? Let's stand together. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and surely He bore our sorrow, and by His... Brother Tom, come and lead us in prayer. Sing that one more time, would you do it? He was wounded.
Father, you know each need. You know each thing that's wrong in this place, Father. We ask that your hand would come down and sweep this congregation, Father. And we give you all the praise and honor and glory, Lord. We uplift your holy name and just thank you before we even see the evidence of it happening, Lord. Father, we just glorify your name in Jesus' holy name. We thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to receive our offering this morning for the expense of the church. Also for, no, I, uh, this is the first Sunday. I forgot. Uh, today is the first. Am I right? First Sunday of every month goes for the building fund. So the offering today be going for the building fund. You can also drop your tithe in at this time. And uh, at the end of this song, what, what's the ages? 13 and down, they'll be going to Children's Church, and we'll give you a signal when you can go. Amen. So we're going to receive that offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given to us that we may give back to you. You've blessed us abundantly, and we thank you for it. Bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. to the Lord. 
And when you say praise the Lord, well, Kennedy just raises her hands and gives a praise to the Lord. And we love her. I've got eight grandchildren. And there's my great-grandson over there. Stand up. Brendan. Yeah, come up here. You can come up here too, okay? i 
seems to be no way that's when the Lord likes to work. Amen. We thank the Lord for the services we've been having. God's been blessing great last Sunday night, Sunday night before. We had just an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Brother Lucas back there sung the, the, the fire down last Sunday night. And uh, we thank God for the Spirit of the Lord that we've felt here and what God's been doing. And uh, this has been a great year. We're starting, we're in one month into our new year already. Our assembly year ended the last of June and started a new month, first of July. Last year was a great year. We had a lot of people saved and and uh, baptized. In fact, we've got, prob we've got probably about uh, 12 or 15 that has joined the church. And we've not gave them the right hand of fellowship yet. They've been... Uh, accepted in. <laughs> We've been trying to wait till everybody could be here. Sister Onita and Brother Sid Baker's two that joined the church and uh, she's been sick for quite a while. They've not been here for quite a few weeks. But uh, we, we're going to wait till after the General Assembly probably to do that. I thank the Lord. I, I just felt like saying this. I thank the Lord for Brother Rick and uh, the help that he is to me. It was a great blessing to me and the work here and a great blessing to the church and and I appreciate him and Sister Tammy she was over our uh, vacation Bible school and done such a marvelous job uh, her and Heather uh, just a couple weeks ago and uh, I don't say a lot I, I wish sometimes I had the uh, uh, I was the type that that uh, could think of to all those great accolades to say I I don't hardly know how to do that, but Brother Rick knows I appreciate him, and I want you to know that I appreciate him. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, turn with us this morning to 2 Corinthians and the 12th chapter, and I'm going to read uh, the first 10 verses of this chapter. Now, if the Lord will, nothing happens. We're going to be leaving tomorrow or Tuesday 1. We're going down to visit with my mother for a few days. Uh, she had uh, uh, two stents put in her heart. They had to go back in and put a larger one in about three weeks ago. We've not been down there. She's not feeling real well. And we're going to go down there, and then we're going to be at the General Assembly. We'll be in Fondy, Kentucky probably next Sunday for their big all-days meeting and homecoming. Brother James Earl McKinney, pastor of Goshen, Ohio, is going to be preaching there next Sunday. And we'll probably be there if nothing happens, and then our General Assembly starts, and we pray that God will give us a great outpouring of His Spirit during that assembly. Brother Rick will be here next next Sunday, and don't let him down. Everybody, do your best to be here for the, those services. Number one, it's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such a one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I... Rather glory in mine infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take 
pleasure and infirmities and reproaches and necessities, in persecutions and distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I am, come a, I'm a, I am become a fool in glory. And I think that's as far as I'll read right there, that tenth verse. Amen. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'd like to use the thought just for a few minutes this morning, strength in weakness. Now, though Paul felt the need to write to the Corinthian church here of some of his experiences, he no doubt felt that some might take it as boasting, as boasting. Now, if anyone had the right to boast and to brag, I believe Paul did, don't you? Amen. Now, I, I don't know how you are, but sometimes when people start to bragging how spiritual they are and how great things that they've done for God, that kind of turns me off a little bit. I don't know why, but I, I get turned off sometimes when people start bragging. Now, Paul, as I said, though, if anybody had a right to brag, it was him. But he said, generally, boasting was not expedient. In other words, it wasn't helpful or it wasn't profitable uh, to boast. But he felt that he must speak of some of the remarkable things that the Lord had done for him. And as he wrote to the Corinthians there, he told them of one of his most remarkable experiences of being caught up to heaven. But he did this with extreme modesty. Uh, he talked about it in the third person. He said, I know a man. I know a man. And in that way, he took himself out of the picture and gave all the credit to the Lord. Now, Paul didn't want self-glory. He just wanted to tell about the experience that he had. And he said, I know a man in Christ about 14 years ago that was caught up into the third heaven and saw things, remarkable things, things that man could not utter. Now, I don't believe that he necessarily meant things that he couldn't talk about, but probably things that you wouldn't believe. Amen. I know one place in the Bible he said, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good things that God has prepared for them that love him and walk uprightly before him. I remember my father, before he died, he had a, a, a bad heart attack and, and uh, we thought he was going to die. Uh, this was a few years before the Lord took him. And uh, he said, Fred, he said, I saw some things that you wouldn't believe. He said, I saw some things that you couldn't even describe. He said, I believe, amen, if anybody ever saw heaven, he said, I believe I saw heaven. I believe that's uh, what Paul was talking about, amen. When he said, I saw things, it wasn't lawful for men to utter. Listen, what else? Uh, he said in verse 7 of this chapter, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, uh, a thorn in the flesh. Did, has anybody ever had been stuck by a thorn? Amen. Uh, a thorn is different. Now, you can tell by my talk that I'm part hillbilly. Both parts. Amen. Hillbilly. <laughs> I'm from the south, in other words. But we used to go uh, black picking blackberry. You don't even have to go south to do that. Amen. But we used to pick blackberries, and you'd get a little uh, briar in your finger. But that's, that's a lot different than a thorn. Amen. A thorn is something that's very, very painful. God, amen. And we don't know exactly what that thorn was, whether it was a spiritual thing or a natural thing. We do know that some have speculated that Paul had bad eyesight, and that may be true. Uh, some of the liberals have tried to explain that tried to explain away the miracles of God have said that Paul had epilepsy and really on the road to Damascus he didn't see a light but what he really had was a seizure. Amen. Uh, he was an epileptic. Uh, others say that he had chronic attacks of malaria 
Amen. But we don't know what that thorn was. But Paul said it was a messenger of Satan, amen, to buffet him. And I thought of you and I many times we're buffeted by Satan. Amen. The Bible talks of him, the devil trying to destroy, uh, and he tries to discourage, and he tries to bring us down, uh, and he tries to rob us of our victory and our joy, uh, and he tries to steal our salvation. Uh, but I thought if we could be like Paul, uh, and I believe this is one of the things uh, that made him great. Uh, amen. In verse 8 uh, and verse 9, he said, For this thing, and talking about the thorn in the flesh, uh, amen, I besought the Lord thrice or three times uh, that it may depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Listen what Paul resigned to the fact that God was not going to take that away. He said, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Therefore, amen. Therefore, he said, because of what I just said in that other verse. Amen. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Now, I don't believe Paul, amen, every time he had a, a trial would jump up and down and say, Oh, boy, I'm having another trial. But he knew, amen, that he could still have joy and the joy of the Lord if that's the way it had to be for the power of God to rest upon him. He was willing to go through with these things. Amen. When we realize our insufficiency, that we can do nothing without God, amen, then we can be strong in the Lord. I like that song that we sing sometimes. I lean on you, Lord. I lean on you. When I don't know what to do, when I don't know which way to turn, amen, thank God, I can lean on Jesus, and he's never failed, and he's never let me down. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I talk many times uh, people fail to see their need of the Lord until things go wrong. Now, I know we'll have trouble uh, in this life. We're not immune from it uh, because we're a Christian. Uh, we have sickness. Uh, many times we have loss. Uh, we have death. Every one of us uh, I'll have to face these things. Uh, but when we have those things, uh, we look uh, at things a little different. Uh, amen. Uh, and when we suffer, uh, amen, you know what that does? Uh, that drives us to our knees uh, when we have different Difficulty, uh, when we have trouble uh, and when we have sickness, uh, amen, that drives us to seek God uh, and get close to God. Uh, I, I'm, I've always told you uh, that I'm emotional uh, and I can't help it. I, I love to stand uh, and clap my hands. Uh, I love to raise my hands uh, and give praise to God. Uh, amen. I love to see when the Spirit of God uh, gets upon a person uh, and they feel like like running. Amen. I like to see them come out of the seat shouting the praises of God. But because those things happen, it does not necessarily mean that you're closer to God right then than ever. Amen. Many times when you're burdened down and can't hardly lift your head and you've been on your knees seeking God, that's when you're close to God, especially when the power of deliverance, amen, comes, amen, how great it is to see that God answers prayer, then you feel that unction, and then you can really praise God for what he's done, hallelujah, I told the church here a while back, through my ministerial experience, uh, 
I've been pastor a long time. I've had highs and I've had lows. I've heard things that just brought me right down to the bottom, especially when somebody that you love, amen, would forsake the Lord and go back and lose out. I've felt many times, amen, such a heavy burden that I felt like I couldn't pray. That's feeling the weakness. Is that right? Amen. And I would just walk. I believe I mentioned this last Sunday night. Many times I've just walked up and down the aisles of the church and raised my hands and say, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Nothing else come out but that name Jesus. But after a while, you feel something on the inside. Start moving. What it is, amen, is the Lord bringing deliverance, bringing peace, restoring the joy of your salvation. We need that today. How many believes that? I thought when Israel came to the Red Sea, most of you know that story, before crossing the Red Sea, in fact, before Moses told them what he was going to do, the Bible said the Israelites looked behind them and saw the enemy. And they looked on either side and saw the mountains. And they looked in front of them and saw the water. Is that right? Amen. And they said, Moses, what are we going to do? The enemy's behind us. The mountains are on either side of us and the water's in front of us, what are we going to do? Uh, amen. Uh, and listen, the Bible said uh, that Moses stretched that rod of God out over the water. Uh, and you know, when I was a young boy, uh, I was raised in church, and I heard these stories, uh, but I thought right then, uh, amen, when he stretched that rod out, uh, amen, something happened that God uh, just parted the waters, but it didn't happen that way. Uh, the Bible said uh, that God uh, caused an east wind uh, to blow all night long, uh, and it heaped the waters uh, of the Red Sea up uh, on either side. Uh, I believe it dried up uh, the mud uh, and made it hard uh, until that more than two million Israelites could cross over on dry land. That's what God will do for you if you're in need. It may look like the enemy has you hemmed in on either side, in front of you, behind you. But I want to tell you something. We've got something powerful. Amen. Greater is he that's in you, than he, that's in the world. How many believes that? Stretch that out. Speak to God. When the children of Israel got on the other side, amen, Moses led them in a song. Did you know that? The Bible said, he sung, the Lord is my strength and my song. And his sister, Marion, got the tambourine and started playing the tambourine and led all the ladies in a dance before God, in a dance of praise, saying, He is our strength. He is our salvation. He is our deliverer. Hallelujah. I like what David said in Psalms 46 and 1. He said, The Lord is our refuge and strength a very present help when in trouble. Amen. A very present help in trouble. This old world that we live in today is in trouble. A few weeks ago we heard of the, the shooting in Colorado. Amen. Now this is happening pretty often where rage fills somebody's heart and they want to kill. Is that right? You mark my word, I, uh, the, the, uh, the populace and the people today, uh, we, get, uh, we think about that, but if it continues to happen, it'll just be another 
another thing that we'll take for granted. Amen. Just like abortion and all the other things. Amen. That's happening today. The rise of the homosexuals. We're in a world of trouble today. Amen. There's trouble everywhere. As, uh, as evil abounds, they've stopped the war over in Kosovo, but they've not taken the hatred out of the hearts of the people for each other. You can't do that. We're in a world of trouble. Amen. Is that right? trouble just about everywhere in every city the Bible said the devil is as a roaring lion trying to destroy and many are letting him destroy them and defeat them but I like what Paul wrote to the Ephesian church he said church it's time that you woke up in the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians Listen what he said in verse 14. He said, Therefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I believe he's saying, church, it's time you woke up. I believe he's saying, sinner, it's time you woke up. I believe he's saying, Christian, it's time that you woke up. Over in the fifth chapter of the book of First Thessalonians, and I believe Brother Johnson mentioned a little about this t- this morning. Listen what it said. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, but yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not of darkness. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the children of God. Amen. You're not of darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. But ye are all of the children of light and of the children of day and are not of the night nor darkness. Let us not sleep. Amen. As others do but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober it's talking about think straight have your mind right amen be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Thank God for the hope that I have in Jesus. Brother Johnson mentioned just a little bit about the letter that was written by the confused man that thought that he could take somebody's life or or kill and maybe wipe out his losses. And a a person has to be, uh, has to be uh, almost possessed uh, to do the things uh, that he done. Uh, Amen. Killed his wife and killed his children. Uh, Amen. Said he loved his wife, uh, but he he wanted to take her life. Then he said, I wish I hadn't have done it. Uh, But try, then he killed uh, his fellow uh, workers uh, or men that he had dealings with. Uh, But listen what he said. I have no hope. Uh, Amen. I have no hope. Uh, I don't have nothing to look forward to. That's what he said. But thank God, I've got hope. And that hope is in a Savior that was put in a tomb. Amen. And three days later, he arose out of that tomb that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I've got hope in him today. I've got hope in Jesus. Do you have?
have hope today. Everything don't go right. Things go wrong a lot of times in this life. I used to think, boy, when I grow up, I won't have nothing else to worry about. Then Keith come along. No, then my children worried about them. Worry, uh, worry about a lot of things we don't uh, that you couldn't help. Boy, I worried about them getting their driver's license. Growing up, boy, driving. That's what a lot of you tell me about your youngsters. It's getting older now. I worried about them. Uh, while me and Mary, after we got married for a while, we could just go to bed and go to sleep and not worry about anything. But now when the kids wasn't in, I didn't sleep. Is that right? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You don't sleep till your children come in. I remember my mother when I was young, amen, and my mother would be up until I came in. I don't care, care what time it was. Uh, amen. She would be there and as soon as I'd come in unlock the door, she said, Fred, is that you? We worry about our children. Then they get grown and they start having children. And then we worry about our grandchildren. Is that right? Then you worry about your great-grandchildren. Amen. Something to worry about. I, th those, are, uh, th th those are not difficult things, really. There's a lot of other things that we have to worry about. Amen. As you get older, you think of more things to worry about. That's right. Amen. Worry, well, how, am I going to be healthy? What, is this arthritis or cancer in my leg? Huh? You know what I'm talking about. You worry. How many knows what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, it's hurting in my chest. Uh, amen. After I've cut the grass, am I having a heart attack? Uh, amen. Or what is it? What is it? Uh, amen. We worry uh, about this and we worry uh, about that. Uh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, one thing I've not worried about. Uh, amen. What is it? I know Jesus uh, is coming back uh, and he's coming back uh, after a people uh, that have made themselves ready. Hallelujah! Boy, I feel like running. Can't run, but I feel like it. Amen. Listen, I've had people call me and talking about, uh, uh, you know, now they're saying at the turn of this century, uh, a new millennium, uh, something drastic uh, is going to happen uh, next year. Uh, I've had people call me uh, when they would hear things uh, such as that. Say, Fred, amen, are you worried about the Lord coming back? I'd say, no. I'd go to bed and go to sleep and say, come. Lord Jesus. That was the cry of the early church. Maranatha, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. I'm not worried about those things. Amen. I worry about a lot of my people that's not saved. Amen. But I'm not worried about what the Lord's going to do. He's coming back. Get back to my lesson here. Give me about five or ten more minutes, okay? How many vote to do that? <laughs> Your vote really didn't mean nothing, just to tell you the truth. <laughs> amen. When the preacher's got the pulpit, amen. Listen, Israel, we read in the Old Testament of Israel as they wandered away from God. They worshipped idols of the nations that were surrounding them. And you know what? The Bible said that God sent prophets among the people. Amen. But it seemed like that they didn't listen. They, they didn't hear the message. And they wandered farther and farther away from God. And then God sent a prophet named Amos to the children of Israel. And listen what he said to them in the fourth chapter of, of the book of, or of uh, Amos in verse 6. He said, I've given you cleanness of teeth 
That really means famine. I've sent famine in the land. One of bread, yet you have not returned unto me. I have withholden the rain when there were three months yet to the harvest. That's the worst time that you could have a lack of rain. Amen. When your crops are really uh, getting ready to come in. He said here, I've caused it to rain on one city and caused it not to rain on another. And he said, uh, uh, so two or three cities wandered into one city to drink water and they were not satisfied. Yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. He said, I've smitten you with blasting and mildew, yet you've not returned unto me, saith the Lord. He said, I've sent among you the pestilence after the manner of the Egyptians, uh, yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And I read that and I thought of the, the, the day and the age that we live in. Uh, amen. When there's drought uh, one place and some countries, uh, amen, don't have enough to eat. And you see those young children uh, with the protruding stomachs uh, because of the lack of protein. Uh, amen. Where they die, they die because of famine. Uh, you look and see floods uh, that's washing parts of cities uh, away. Uh, and I thought of here the other day uh, that they was getting the bad storms in Detroit and having bad storms in Toledo. I pray, Lord, don't let it storm, but let it rain out there at church. Uh, we put that new uh, landscaping in, uh, and I hate to see Rick out there watering that uh, every day. Uh, Lord, send a little rain. Uh, amen. Uh, but you know what? It rained north, uh, and it rained south, uh, and it sprinkled here. Uh, is that right? Uh, amen. Now, it, he said, I've sent other things, uh, pestilence uh, and diseases among you. Uh, and I thought, boy, we've got some strange diseases today. Uh, we've got Ebola, that I think is the way they pronounce it, uh, that all at once it'll start eating uh, the flesh uh, of the body. Uh, for a lot, few years, uh, we've had AIDS, uh, amen, that had decimated uh, some whole populations uh, of people in, uh, in Africa. Amen. I thought of uh, other things cancer. You hear of it almost every family uh, is affected uh, by somebody uh, that has cancer. Uh, but the Lord said you've not come back to me. Uh, he said now uh, it's time to prepare uh, to meet God. Uh, you're going to meet judgment. Uh, I want to tell you something church. Uh, amen. Uh, I wish I was on the radio right now. Uh, I wish I was on CNE. Uh, CNN. Uh, amen right now. Uh, why? I'd say, listen, uh, the Lord is coming back uh, and he's going to send judgment on a world uh, that's forgotten him. Uh, but thank God, uh, we still got time and we've still got hope and it's in Jesus. Still got time and still got hope. Oh, yes, it laughs you off the air. Say you're crazy. I want to tell you something. Amen. Are you preparing to meet God as they come to the music? Or have we let the many other things, the temporary things, keep us from the joy of the Lord? I thank God for prosperous times. I'll be 65 years old in just a few months. I know you didn't believe that. You wouldn't believe that. I know Lucille's life and she believes it. She knows. I'm just kidding her. I'll be 65. I remember when things was not as prosperous as they are today. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Prosperous. When I was a young boy, we didn't have a furnace in the house where you could go just move a little button and run the temperature up or down. I thank God for that this week. I tell you. I thank God for air conditioning. I remember when we didn't have air conditioning. But you know what? I didn't miss it because I'd never experienced it. I never had air conditioning. I, I didn't know what it was. I started working at Cadillac Motors back in 1952. And at that time, I was working in, on the assembly line. They said, we've got a new job for you. We'd like for you to put air conditioners in the cars. 
Back then they had a great big unit that would half fill up the trunk of a car. And they had glass, glass, uh, uh, plastic, some type of plastic that run up into the back of the, behind the back seat and it would let air out in the back and that's where your air would come out for your air conditioner in the Cadillac. We was making 52 Cadillacs an hour. An hour, you think of that? And you know what? Only about 90 a day had air conditioning, about 90 cars a day. So really, I don't care if you was rich. You didn't know too much about air conditioning. I didn't know what it was when I was real young to have hot and cold water in the house. In fact, some places I didn't know what it was to have water in the house. Amen. I had to help dig wells. I helped my dad dig a well. Amen. And uh, boy, we moved to Michigan. We moved to Michigan. I was about 16 years old. And we moved in a house that had a hot and cold water. Had electricity. Didn't have a television yet. But had electricity. Had all of those things. And we had a, a coal furnace, but it still had a temperature control that you can control the damper and you could turn, the, amen, that little control and it would open up and make that fire go hotter, amen, and it would cause your house to get warm. I thought we was millionaires, amen, but we're living in a day we've got every push button co uh, convenience that you can think of. You know what probably causes more arguments in your house than anything? If somebody loses the remote control of the television, you'll miss a whole story, amen, while you're trying to find it. We've looked in the couch, down under the couches and moved the, uh, the cushions. And, and uh, I, I said the other day, every time Travis comes to our house, we lose the remote. He hides it, I guess. Amen. But I want to tell you something. I, I'm glad uh, that we live uh, in a prosperous day. Uh, but in this day, uh, if we're not careful, uh, we lose. Uh, I feel like preaching uh, that old time uh, power uh, that when you got sick, uh, you'd call uh, for the elders uh, of the church uh, and they'd come in. You didn't have Blue Cross. Uh, and hospitalization but praise God you had the power that would raise the sick up is that right if we're not careful we'll lose a little of that because of the things that we've got I'd rather have Jesus I'd rather feel what I feel than to have all the wealth of this world Hallelujah. I'd rather have Jesus than anything today. Oh, he's my all in all. Handala my shandala my God. And I want to tell you something. He's coming back. Soon I've got a lot bit lot more here. Amen. I thought I had here. We let the other many other temporary things keep us from the joy of the Lord but even yet today the joy of the Lord is our strength and we need the resurrecting power of the Holy Ghost to saturate us amen and give us spiritual strength for the things that we might be facing in the future I get Dave Wilkerson, and I've mentioned this before. I get his newsletter. I, I, I thank God for men like that. He wrote the other day, I'm still predicting a fall in the stock market that'll cause many people to have no hope. Amen. Well, it won't affect me. But I'll tell you one thing. It will affect a lot of people. A lot of people with no hope. But it's not in the stock market. It's not in the arms that we've got. It's not in the bombs and the guns. But our hope is in Jesus. Jesus Christ. Could we stand our feet? I've preached long enough. I'm getting as bad as Brother Rick. I've got another page or two there. 
But I want to tell you something. When you think you're strong, you may not be as strong as you think you are. When you think, boy, I'm spiritual now, I've got it made. You better watch out. When it's, you get to the place that you say, I just can't do it without him, without my helper, I need help. That's when you're really strong. That's when he steps in. Karen and, and uh, Kim Jones and it, uh, I believe it was Jerry, they sang a song that I always loved. Saved, delivers, and heals. He does it. I don't do it. Brother Johnson said this morning, if he, if he could, he told his boy, he said, if I could, I'd save everybody. I'd get them in my arms and I'd save them. Oh, yes, we would, but we, we're not the Savior. Amen. Can I say this? Now, listen, uh, I, I think we ought to respect the preacher. I think you ought to respect the pastor. Amen. But I want to tell you something. Your pastor is not God. Amen. I'm talking about me. I'll talk about him too. We're just men. We make mistakes at times. Amen. Don't dip, don't put your hope in Rick and me. Amen. You know who you put it in? The one that was perfect, that walked the shores of Galilee, that said, I have come that you might have life and more abundantly. Put it in him. All we're doing is representing him, presenting him to you. Jesus Christ, the giver of life. How do you feel? Do you feel your need of him this morning? If you're unsaved, you certainly need him. You need him more than anything. While every head is bowed, Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, today, and we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We pray, dear God, that you would touch the hearts of people that are here that really don't know you as Savior. Maybe some at one time had the joy of the Lord and the light has gone out and their vessel is dim. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them today. There's others that may have needs and they don't hardly know how to face those needs. They don't hardly know what to do. We pray, Lord, this morning you show them yet you're the deliverer that you want to meet their need. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. While they sing, while every head's bowed, you have a need if you're unsaved. You let the joy of the Lord leak out. You have a special need. I'd like for you to come and stand in front of this altar this morning.
just raise our hand together and pray and thank God for his love. Lord, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for the hope that you've given us through Jesus. We pray, dear God, that you would bless our people. I know there's some here, Lord, that felt the touch and felt you moving and knocking at their heart. But Lord, they just didn't come forward. We pray, dear God, before they get home, they give their heart to you and accept you as Savior. Let us, Lord, bask in the joys that you've given us. Bless each one. Bless them that are sick, not able to be here today. Let the Holy Ghost fill us. Let the Holy Ghost saturate us, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it again. 
are supposed to be weak, but God made them strong. And I appreciate Pastor's message today for us. Amen. We we'll give you a special invitation to stay with us this evening, or this afternoon, I should say, for our Sloppy Joe's dinner over in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, just for a donation, there's not a set price, uh, and it just goes for our dorm fund. The young people are over there taking care of that, and uh, we'll treat you so many ways you got to like one of them. Is that right? I believe we have folks with us today. Is it from California? All the way up. Let's make them welcome this morning, will you? Amen. I didn't catch the name, but my wife talked to them earlier. Uh, amen. You've come to the right place today, and we appreciate you coming. When they come from California, folks, to be with you, you know something's happening. Is that right? Is that right? We got folks here from California today, from Nashville, Tennessee today, uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio today. How many believe it's happening? I love what we're, what we're experiencing right now. Please stay with us today and eat with us. It's for a donation only. Brother Jason asked me to ask the blessing over the food over here. And then when we dismiss, let our seniors go first today because how many believe they deserve to go first? They've waited on us enough. Is that right? And so if, uh, if you're a senior today, we want you to exit and go down the hallway and into the fellowship hall, and uh, they'll be prepared to serve you over there just shortly. What's that? Somebody's, uh, yeah, all the way, Sister Don uh, and Scott's family is from Oregon. I tell you, we got them from everywhere today. Is that right? Let them know. They've been with us three weeks now. Amen. We appreciate them coming. Uh, Lord, it won't be long. Folks come from out west. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great when they come from Monroe. What do you think? Uh, be back with us tonight. you got a special invitation. Don't forget, Brother Rob wants the Sanctuary Choir here at 530. Sanctuary Choir, Victory. or not Sanctuary Choir, Victory Choir, 530. Victory Choir, 530. And tonight, uh, please be with us. Uh, Brother Mortimer from uh, Missionary to Peru is going to come and speak for us this uh, evening. Please uh, come and, uh, and have church with us again this evening. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the day and the food that we're about to eat. Father, we thank you for the message this morning, for the Spirit of God we feel in this place. We thank you, Lord, that when we are weak, you are surely made strong. Today, Father, we ask that you bless the church family. You go with us through our entire day. Bring us back again at the appointed hour. Please bless the food now, Lord, that we're about to partake. We ask you to bless it to the nourishment of our bodies, our bodies to your service. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Please greet our guests, and uh, we'll see you over to dinner table. <laughs>